guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. I suppose, Kean, it's Ian Birmingham Day, I suppose, going into his 13th season as a player for St. Patrick's Athletic. And I was just thinking about this the other day, actually, when we said we we're going to do it. And uh, like for an outfield player in particular to be going in uh, 13 seasons with one club is just remarkable. We'll obviously talk about his early career, his mid career, and his latter career. And uh, I don't know if you'll remember a lot of the details of his early career because it feels like yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah, it feels like 30 years ago. It feels like 30 years ago, not bloody 13 yeah. years ago, but uh, I was just thinking, I suppose, he started off, obviously, at UCD, Pete Matten had him there, moved on to Shamrock Rovers, played against Ronaldo in a friendly, uh, which was fantastic for him, I suppose, for Shamrock Rovers. And, uh, but in 2010, Pete Matten uh, signed him up for St. Patrick's Atletic when he was a uh, manager there. And I suppose in that first season he was at the club, two highlights for me. Highlight number one is uh, his introduction and wearing that baggy Pats T-shirt when he signed for the club, when he was actually announced, he was holding the scarf. I'll put the image up now for people to see as well, if they haven't seen it. And the other highlight, I suppose, was uh, that goal against Shamrock Rovers at Palace Stadium, the free kick where uh, Pats yeah. won 2-0. And that uh, announced them, if you like, to the Pats fans, and that got them in the door very early, didn't it? Yeah, look, uh, we saw in the, obviously in 2010, when we had an awful season in 2009, Jeff Kenner obviously left but we had a fantastic left fall in, in end of Stevens that year. Yeah. Uh, obviously went to Shamrock Rovers. And look, mm -hmm. we, we knew he was top quality the minute, the minute we seen him play for Pat's end. There. And I didn't think he'd go on and have, let's say, the career he's had in terms of Premier League and stuff like that. But I definitely think, I definitely think Pat's got value for money here in terms of like the deal with... I, I presume there was some sort of a deal that Bremo came to Pats considering, you know, Enda Stevens was going to Rover, so it was kind of a swap type of thing. Mm. Uh, we seen him play in a couple of pre-season friendlies. Like, uh, that was 13 years. This is going on. In January, it would be 13 years ago in Richmond. Mm. And uh, that was something about me. He was up and down the wing like a Louis. Mm. That was, he, was, he was excellent. Uh so young, obviously we've seen the picture. He's not going to thank anyone for that picture coming back up. Uh, I wouldn't be too happy if that picture came back up. But, yeah, he was just, he was a breath of fresh air in for Pats at the time. He mm. was he was coming in to fill big shows in terms of mm. end of statements. You know, we had Desi Bourne there before. We've had, yeah. you know, we've had that John Frost. You know, we've had even Stephen Brennan who played right or left full in some most most mm. cases. So he was coming into a decent a decent group of left folds, you know, and mm. at the time as well, you know, we had we also had a young lad, Jay Carroll, who just yeah. signed, who was just breaking into the team, mm. who Pete Martin obviously really liked. And uh but I think I was I'd be forever thankful for uh Pete Martin bringing him to the club, you know, and that four season, like you said, he was excellent for us, you know. We played in the defence with, if I'm thinking off the top, we had Damian Lynch played on the right. Mm -hmm. You would have had Connor Kenny, you would have mm -hmm. had uh, Shane Guthrie, and mm -hmm. you would have had Bermo. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we went, I, I remember the early years with Pete, you know, with the football wouldn't have been the best. But, you know, we weren't conceding an awful lot of goals. Mm. I think that season we went on a long unbeaten run as well towards the start of the season. So, mm. you know, we, obviously that that midweek game in Shamrock Rovers was like the celebration as well. Uh, really nice, really good picture. Uh, that was, I think that was our first win up in Tallet as well. I was up there at, at that game myself. I would have been, that, yeah. yeah. I think that would have been our first win. And, yeah. It was like it was it was great to see Bermo scored and then mm. you know he really became a fan's favourite from that year on. Yeah, so it was in two thousand eleven Pats got into Europe inadvertently in many ways. I think Bingo went busted then Pats got in and uh, obviously he enjoyed his first taste in Europe then, didn't he? Yeah, look excellent. That's that season was uh that season <clears throat> was you played know, six was, games in Europe that season, didn't we? I yeah, think. it was it was an, we done we always done really well. In and around the 2010 2011 season, mm. you know, we did really well in the first half of the season, <clears> and then we obviously wouldn't have having the biggest, the biggest of squads and stuff like that. 
So you know, we we would have always I would have always caught up with us towards the back end of the season, and we'd be mm. you know we'd fall short of Europe, and we'd be definitely out of the league race at that stage. But mm. you know, uh, in Europe, he was brilliant. His performances, I think, you know, the funny thing is as well is his best season, or he was young player of the year probably for five or six years and Pat mm. you know we could qualify for it for five or six years it was, it was mad it was like every year he was he was just automatically winning it but you know we, in Europe he was excellent we had some big wins we had we had some treks of a journeys you know yeah. and you know Karagandhi being one like Kazakhstan who plays in Kazakhstan do you know what I mean it's not somewhere you go or so often like so you know it, it was great for him I was delighted for him I uh, to get his first taste mm-hmm. in Europe and you know we you know obviously then he was hot property because you know we were just in Europe we we obviously got in through the back door mm-hmm. we that, but, you know we got in through the back mm-hmm. door we got Europe and you know it was great to you know it, it was great for him and mm-hmm. his performances he didn't show you away from me you know and mm-hmm. I think back at that, that game against Karagandhi especially at mm-hmm. home and you, you just think of Derek Doyle scoring, like mm. Derek Doyle, the left winger, who uh, wouldn't have been the best technical player, let's put it that way. But, uh, you know, we, we he done really well. in He really stood out in what was a bang average side, you know. And, mm. you know, you look at the likes of, obviously, Stephen Bradley and all, was playing on them teams at the time. And Stewie Bourne was in that side, you know. So we had a... He he was really a young gun in that team, you know. You look at the, the the really old pros there in terms of like, you know, you think back Gary Rogers, you know, yeah. was in goal. Yeah. He was another young player at the time, and <laughs> you know, it was it, it, it was mad when you think back of all the players. You know, we obviously mm. brought Danny Hart in, and he, he was doing well for us up front, so we had a focal yeah. point. But really, Ian Ian and Derek Penda came in that yeah. year as well, and. The two of them were really, really good fullbacks for Pats, mm. and you know they done really well for us. But Bermo just stood out. He was just—I've never seen a player, and I've still yet to see a player go up and down the wing as much mm. like in literally in army time of the league. Yeah, I think young, younger viewers who might be watching might have just seen Berman the last couple of years, and that they won't really understand fully what kind of player he was. But um, you know, he was. <laughs> Very quick, he was athletic. He could get up and down. As you said, he's very, very good going forward, crossing into the box, but also very good defensive. He's just all around very good, wasn't he? There was I no think, real think, weakness I think in the front. Uh, I think what I think what doing him here uh, when we're saying wasn't he? I still think he has an awful lot to offer this Pats team. But well, I suppose to be fair, some of these last, like I'm sure he'd admit as well, he's lost a little bit of pace, but a bit of experience has taken over there. But we we'll get on to that a bit later. I suppose 12, 13, and 14 were real golden years for Pats, golden years for him. I think he was player of the year, I'm pretty sure, in 2012, by the way, wasn't he? And Pats yeah. were in Europe again. 2012, obviously, he came around and Liam Buckley came into Pats and he came in mm. fairly late into Pats as well. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think it was just before Christmas he signed and mm. we, we really, we had, I don't think we had any, I think we had Sean O'Connor at the time, Saki, and I, I, I don't think we had really, we had Jay Carroll, but I don't think we had anyone else really in the squad mm. that was signed up and Mm. Obviously, Bucco came in with Dave, and you yeah. know they they put together a really strong squad mm. from players that weren't playing. For example, you know you look at mm. obviously bringing in Jura Bruin, mm. you know keeping Connor Kenna, bringing in Kenny Brown, bringing in mm. Brendan Clark, bringing in uh, Barry Murphy. Mm. You know we brought in Aiden Proust that year. We brought <laughs> in Paf in that year. You go into mm. the midfield. We brought in. James Chambers, Johnny mm. Russell. You know, we had some really good players. Vinny Fatterty even came back. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, you know, you've obviously brought in Chris Forrester. So, yeah. as you as you can tell, Christy Fagan, based off Flood signed halfway through that season. You know, so so no, no, new players, actually, yeah, when you think about it. Yeah. Side, a brand new side. And Jay Carroll was obviously done by three, which was, mm. uh, which was a bit... Of a bit hurtful to Pats fans because Berman was there showing a light for the last two years, for example, yeah. since he signed for us, and he was mm-hmm. our main man in the in the side. And you know, we we obviously we seen Jay Cardle get the number three shot, and Berman signed really late, which we were delighted mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, look, I don't think I don't think a uh, 
numbers really meant much because Bermo ended up coming in and I would say proving Liam wrong as such mm. and Sean why he should have been re him as the number one and he was. Mm. He had a fantastic season. Him and Jero O'Brien and I think they complimented both. I don't think uh, mm. I don't think we should talk about Bermo without talking about Jero O'Brien, especially in that mm. in that point. I think they're the both, mainstays for a few years, actually. The two of them, actually, yeah, in many ways. The both of them yeah. are fantastic as wingbacks, uh, which they were wingbacks before. Before wingbacks, well, like, wingbacks in the last three or four years have really come into it and been very popular. But I think Bermo and Gerard O'Brien were doing that for Pats in 2012. Before mm. I know football was changing that time, and I mm. was wingbacks were coming into it. But I think in the League of Ireland, especially, yeah. I think they yeah. forced to go proper up and down wing backs that we've seen and mm. you know he was he was excellent at that team obviously went on and getting player of the year which was mm. fantastic for him as such because you know we, it, it's it's great to see and you know we love we 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 love Graham with this club and I think he, he knows that and but you know he's not he hasn't been here this long we'll go back on to the year by year thing in a minute but mm. he hasn't been here this long because we love him. He's a great fit for this club mm. and he fits the build and then Pats fit the build for him. So it really does work both ways. It's never a one-way thing with Burma. Uh He gives so much to the team. But just in them early years, like it was with, you know, with that team, you just think back mm. at the back four, you know, um, you know, he obviously had Greg Bulger that year as well, 2012, that came in and he done that sitting role, which obviously gave Burma and Jared the yeah. forward with, Great Bulger sitting with Kenny Brown and Connor Kenny in behind, and you know it was a it was a perfect matchup type of thing. But you know it was it was good in them early years, uh, just up and down the wing, assist after assist. He didn't score an awful lot of goals, and I think a lot of people kind of give him stick when he does score because of that. But you know, uh, you know he he was fantastic in them in them years yeah. now and that team like if anyone goes by like, any younger viewers watching like just watch yeah. two or three of the games from the 2012 2012 day in serious and you'll see what we're talking about and how good he was I think the amazing thing was in those early years in particular like he was just signing every year was year after year after year after year after year contract as well that's the mad thing like yeah, for most of his 13 yeah, year career he signed one year deals that's it, mental it, when you think about well, it the old realm are of uh, Bermo to Rovers every year. Every year. Uh, come around. It was similar to the Lee Desmond one now that we're getting an awful lot. But, you know, it was uh, Bermo to Rovers every year. And we all yeah. thought every year he was gone. And because mm. Pats can't compete with Rovers, Pats will never try and compete with Rovers in mm. terms of finances mm. and stuff like that. Mm. But, you know, he always ended up staying. He always... Mm. I well, it's just been set, being uh, successful in those early years helped, as you say. Bucky came in, and um, obviously they made up, so to speak, if you know what I mean. But uh, he proved them wrong or whatever. But then to win the league a year later in 2013, and then obviously win the cup in 2014, and in the meantime be in European competition as well. Uh, that would have been huge for him as well, wouldn't it? And um, yeah, look, look, a successful the period whole, for him. Obviously, the hort of losing the yeah. league by a couple of points to Sligo. Yeah, uh, I know we finished hort, but. We, it, was like, we, it was a bit weird. It was like third in the end, but they were closer to winning it. It's a weird thing, yeah. wasn't it? Mm. We, were, uh, we were really close. Like, you think back yeah. to that year, Fagan's penal miss and Sligo in the summer. That's mm. that just, I still see that penal. I think it's still in the year, the ball. But, mm. you know, you're looking at that, and then obviously the horse from the cup going. Half of the players were obviously gone. Mm. And Trevor Crowley and stuff like that. We all know the situation there. And, you know, to come in in 2014, bring in Harry Kenny. Mm. So, keeping the majority of the squad, I know Chambers, mm. uh, Saki, of course, the most famous mm. one, Dalton Rovers, Barry Murphy, and mm. you know, the likes of these type of players left for Shamrock Rovers. And, you know, Pat's done really well to hold on to the core group of players in terms of mm. the back four, you know, which has included Bermo, obviously Clarkie and Goal. Greg mm. Bulger, you know, then we added, we brought in Killia Brennan, who was a believable son in Town of Bourne, you mm. know. Yeah, them yeah. two were the kind of, um, they were the ones that gave them that lift, I think, to push them on to the title, to be fair, yeah. We lost Saki to bring in Town mm. of Bourne, 
and we lost uh, James Chambers to bring in mm. Brennan really and they were two big signings and look at the time they were risky signings because you know Conan didn't really do much of shells he won't mind me mm. saying and you know Killian Brennan had an awful season at Shamrock Rovers mm. mm. I say awful the performances weren't that bad but because he was Rovers were, were, Rovers were in a funny state at that point as well. There was this weird yeah, you know, atmosphere there at the know, club, and that he didn't, he didn't really for some reason it just didn't work out for him. And it's one, yeah, look, Burma was in that season again, similar. I think, I think it's that period 2012, 2013, 2014 to a certain extent, but 2012 and 2013 were Burma's seasons to go for it. They were, yeah, he was just. Brilliant. That league yeah. winning so Johnny Russell. Mm. He was the best left back in the league. We might as well throw it out there for people that might know or whatever. He was the best left back in the league. He was the best left back Definitely. in the league. I'd say. Definitely. Yeah. I would say as a patch fan, probably since twenty ten, but mm. Ender Stevens obviously got a mill from Shamrock Rovers, so he was probably yeah. the so called best left full. Mm. And then when but he, he was left, gone, yeah. Firmo yeah. really took over and you know, that, that league winning side was, uh, like like I said, some of the younger viewers, I feel old even saying that. I'm only playing 23. But, Good thing you know, we're, not, we're not going back further 10 years. Yeah. You know, some some of the younger yeah. viewers watch back on that because that 2013 yeah. season, it was a pit and yeah. moist by Bermo and Jura O'Brien as fullbacks attacking. And it was really good. Some of our, you know, you think, you think of some of them, most famous goals that year and the one against Dundalk with Gerald Bruin it, it was level on points Gerald Bruin puts a great cross in mm. the amount of times Bermo put great balls in to Christy and Bisto at the time and you know I think Bermo had a really good relationship with Chris Forrester mm. uh, yeah going, yeah, going down the left Forrester mm. obviously played down the left that year that's another uh, thing people might remember Forrester was mainly a left winger as such in those early days yeah, yeah. And, you know, well, Buka always tried to play down the right, and he always yeah. tried to, the left, the left winger always tried to come in and play as a, a wide striker type of role. But, you know, Buka was always playing down the right with Cone, and can he get the ball mm. out? Can he get it out of your feet and across into the box type of thing? But, you know, uh, Burma was excellent with Forrester. I think the two of them really complemented each other. Mm. Uh, Forrester was. Forrester he allowed the Forrester to come inside, though, didn't he? Yeah, but that's, that's that's the way book out players in terms yeah. of players mainly down the right with yeah. Forrester cutting in off, cutting in as a wide striker yeah. type of thing yeah. and in type of a free roll around the left area. And he mm. was he was really good back then in that area. And you know, he was very effective when he got the ball. But that all started with Burma as well. And they, they really strike a great partnership and relationship, I would say, midway through the twenty twelve season, which obviously mm. carried on to twenty fourteen. Mm. But it was it was really good uh, in terms of just the free flowing football, the attacking football, so lovely on the eye. But mm. not only lovely on the eye, like we are looking now these days and we think of Man City, you know, and sometimes that gets boring because it's not effective. But that Pats team in 2013, we were effective, you know, and we might have 20 or 30 goals or whatever, or 20 or 30 passes before a goal. But it was always progressive. It was always attacking, and it was always really attack minded. And we only had one thing to do, and that was get the ball forward as much as we could. Mm. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Them seasons with Burma, and obviously then you go on to twenty fourteen, and again, as always, we're always thankful that Burma stayed with us. Uh, I don't think in ten years he was ever going to live in, in at that time. But no. you know, we did lose Conor Kenneth, a captain that year. Uh, in the off season to Shamrock Rovers and you know we we could have went out and bought big but we ended up giving putting our trust into Sean Hoare and you know he became a really a big player there and he, I think he fitted it really well so it wasn't that much of a loss. No. Uh, I think the team was still really good. Arguably mm. I think that twenty four Dane team was probably better than the 24 day team, even though we didn't win the Yeah, day. They, they'd be disappointed, I think. I, mean, I know they were disappointed how they did in the league. But um, again, Burma was very consistent that year and it ended up obviously winning a cup. And that was a massive thing for Pats at the time as well because it had been donkey's years since Pats won a cup. And uh, I've talked about before how uh, I've seen Pats win leagues, challenge for leagues. 
and then the cup would just never happen with really really good sides so winning the cup in 2014 was arguably more important than winning the the league in oh, 2013 oh. but look the two of them combined were great like you win the league That's and the it. cup and uh, Ber- Bermo, as, as I said, he was still the most consistent left back in the league at that point as well. You think back in the leg of Warsaw away game, and mm. you know that ball, that ball that he put in for Christy mm. Fagan, strap in, and Super you know, ball, yeah. Yeah, it, it was really good football. I think mm. what made that better was if any if anyone watches the clip back, it's the pass from mm. Fatty Bermo. Yeah, uh, you find it on YouTube. I think that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, mm. It was it was fantastic and. You know, Bermo was really good that year, like you said, and I, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but that's how consistent he was. We never really seen Bermo have a bad game for Pats, you know, and it, it's, you know... It and even, Keith, we, we jumped a little bit forward there to 15, 16, 17. It was a weird one those years, because obviously that team kind of fell apart, if you like. Bermo was still there, obviously signing his one-year contracts, I think, as well. And uh, obviously in 15, I think, didn't Pats win the League Cup in 15? We beat Limerick. Uh, the year That's it, four one. Uh, yeah, but that was you know it was it was tough tough year on them them games. Uh, mm. That season, obviously, you know our, our heart was ripped out of the team in terms of mm. you know obviously mm. our, we we had Greg Bulger for the twenty fifteen mm. season and the 2015 season it felt like the end of the road for that mm. group of players but, but the funny thing is they still followed up by winning trophies because they won the league cups in 15 16 no, well, so well, they won well, yeah no uh, 2016 was a totally different side but 2015 yeah, was, yeah. you still yeah. had you still had Greg Bulgy or Killian Brennan's mm. you know mm. and you still had your team you know and you mm. still had your big players mm. but still had Bermo <laughs> that's it you had James Chambers who came back that year mm. and you know, you had Arden Green who was doing really well uh, uh, out on the left for Pats. You mm. know, and obviously Forrestar left halfway through that season. That's so, right. Yeah. You know, Forrestar started to play in the centre because uh, mm. because of Johnny Russell leaving, and you know we kind of had a little bit of a void there. So Forrestar yeah. started playing more centrally, and yeah. then he got his milk eat a bit. But you mm. know, that team was it felt like the end of the row type of thing at that team. After mm. winning the A Cup and getting into Europe, I tell like like I said, that's always had to say in Europe. You mm-hmm. can get them mm-hmm. everything else the bonus, but it was a bit of a disappointment, mm. you know, considering how well we've done in you know, obviously we lost Kieran Kilduff that mm. year as well mm. to Dundalk, who ended up going on and doing really yeah. well. Yeah, you know, so we, we had a lot of change, mm. but twenty sixteen was the big overhaul of players. Mm. Uh, you know, you obviously had Clarkey, you had Jura mm. Blue, uh, mm. Kenny Brown left. Clarkey and Jura mm. Blue stayed, of course. You had Kenny Brown left, you had Greg Bulger that left, you had Killian Brennan that left. You know, yeah. you had all these big players. Forrest was obviously gone the year before. Mm. So, you know, your, your league and cup winning sides are being taken away from you, really. You know, we had... Mm. Sean Harder, who was probably going to be the aim of Ma- mainly on. young players were coming through at that point as well. That's it, like the likes of Lee Desmond and stuff like that played. Uh, and all that. But you know, that was mm. this was the new cycle then. Jerry O'Brien, O'Brien was obviously coming to the end. Mm. Uh, you know, we had Mick Barker, uh, mm. who obviously was covering there for most of the season. Jerry mm. had a lot of injury issues in 15 mm. and 16. Mm. But that's one thing we Touch wood, I've never seen with Bremo was major injuries, and yeah. you know he, he really looks after himself. Hopefully, and that's why he's been able to extend his career as well. And obviously, it's funny because as you said, there was a lot of rebuilding there, but they were still winning cups. But 2017 is where it got dodgy, and it, uh, we talk about yeah, many results. Uh, I would say 2016 it got dodgy. Look, we won the we won the league cup, yeah, uh, which was great, but we fell mild short in the league. Ah, yeah, in yeah, Europe. Yeah. I think we yeah. finished sixth. And sixth, yeah, yeah. You know, that wasn't good enough. Uh, but as well as 2017, it got very dodgy. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a lot to it, you know. And yeah. There was no doubt we were in the shits for a lot of the season. <laughs> and, you know, we, we were lucky that we we were able to sell Conor O'Malley. Yeah. Um, you know, getting the funds to bring in mm. Killian Brennan, to bring in Jordy Balk, and to bring in Owen Garvin that year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think them three really helped us. But Kept them up nearly. It, 
this is the season that Bruno was given the captaincy, and it was it was great because mm. obviously in that season, there's no question he was questioned about his leadership. He was mm. questioned about his is he able to captain this team? I heard some people saying Gavin Pearce should get it. I was say I was shocked. Gavin Pearce. Surely he was, was um, like a playing devil's advocate as well. But um, and I, I remember the time. But surely he was one of the players you would have given the captaincy to without much of a problem. Well, would have thought. Exactly. Uh, look, it was it was a. It still gives me nightmares last season in terms of, you know, we were going. Mm. Bucko always wanted to win. He was so positive. <laughs> it was nil all forty four minutes in the game over Audio Park. And we're all, we couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. I think Pats were like 15 to 1 to win the game. Yeah. Uh, we're in the, no, I'm saying that we're nil all, but we didn't even have a shot and goal. Uh, mm. We just we kind of contained them. Yeah. And yeah. We, we went in, we went in 44 minutes, and then we, we got 1 nil down. Then Bermo gets sent off, and then we go 2 nil down. And we're going in a half time after being 44 minutes nil all. Mm. We're going in 2 nil down and down to 10 men. And then, then, then the, I think we went on. Floodgates. Like that game against Cork City, I think he scored the third goal to give us a 3-2 lead. And uh, obviously that was a key moment in the season for Pats and he helped us stay up. And at the end of the day, that was the main thing because since Pats haven't uh, gone down since, they're still in the Premier Division. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so it, was look, a massive, that, it was a massive game for the club. And obviously that was one game. Yeah. That was yeah. only one game. Yeah. Uh, over the course of the season, I think, mm. I don't know how many goals, but he scored six or seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I remember Roy, he really stepped up. We played Limerick. Yeah. And Dowsy Benet absolutely tore us asunder. And Who's he? Yeah. And he, <laughs> he was fine. And he had Bastion Hurley just, they ran mm. the show. We found ourselves 2 0 down to Limerick. Yeah. Uh, in and around the summertime, that was uh, 2 0 down to Limerick, we were in that game. And Conor Bourne scored a free kick. Bermo scored a really, a really big goal just in front of mm. the fans as well. Mm. And there's a great picture. I'll send it to you and you can put it into the tape, put it up on here. Uh, Bermo, and he was really, he was revved up for it. He had his fists up and he scored and he was giving the Pats fans the, the L thumbs up or the L fist pumps and stuff. And then Conor Bourne scored a free kick and we ended up getting out there with a two hour draw. Don't yeah. ask me how. But, you know, all these points added up. Mm. Uh, you know, we go up to big games. It, it, it must have been really tough because this is Bremer's first year as captain mm. of this football club. And, and his first year, really, like properly down near the bottom of packs. So I know they finished six the season before, but it. it's more of a yeah. mid table scenario, you know? Yeah, and it was it was tough. I'd, I'd say it's a different challenge. I'd say he couldn't sleep at night. And mm. I'd say, no, I'm not going to say he was the only one. Trust me, that was, I'd say that was I'd say that was a load of players I couldn't sleep that, that including year. the manager. Yeah, uh, it was it was really tough. And then yeah. you think back towards the back end of the season, we, we had to bring in Lucas Scowron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, like I, I, I couldn't get me hurt. People say he was a good shot stopper and stuff. But he used to roll the kid, he used to roll the ball to the to the playing striker and then pull off a wall the other side. You know, and I, I just couldn't get my head around it. Like, <laughs> you would make an error and then make, make the save. I know what you mean. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, we, yeah. went up, we went up to Derry last, mm. well, up to Bunkrana. <laughs> yeah. We needed a point to mm. stay up. Otherwise, we were gone. Mm. We were going up there. Barry Murphy obviously got injured. I think he broke mm. his rib or he fractured his rib up in audio a few weeks mm. beforehand. But we're going up there with a the keeper that couldn't catch a ball. You know, and it, you know, it was, it was frightening. It was it was really, it was a horrible time. Obviously, mm. we got out of it. Bermo, mm. as the captain, really stepped up that year. But I think there was still a lot of question marks about Bermo. Mm. And he signed a two-year deal after that, interestingly, though. Yeah, which yeah. I obviously delighted with. I think all the, ma- the major Pats fans would be buzzing with that. Mm. But, you know, in terms of that 2017 season, that 2018 season, we recruited really well in terms of mm. we just stayed up. We hadn't been in Europe for two years. Mm. And we just stayed up. Which Barsley, was, Buckley was sacked then, wasn't he? 
at the end of yeah, that season, 2018. You know I'm saying? Yeah. In fairness to Liam, we were recruiting really well for the budget yeah. that we had. Yeah. In terms of, we brought in Kevin Toner, who yeah. the great partnership with Lee. Yeah. You know, we obviously we brought back, uh, we brought in Brendan Clark halfway through that season. Mm. You know, and we, we brought in Simon Madden that year. You know, then you look in the yeah. in the, yeah. we brought back. Uh, we had Ryan Brennan who came in the mm. centre. You know, so we we did recruit well that year, mm. considering mm. the mess we were in. You know, obviously mm. we didn't hold Jordy Balk, uh, who yeah. was who yeah. been a massive one for us if we mm. were to hold on to him. But you know, that season obviously Liam got the sack, which was us that Bowles mm. game. I think back to that Bowles game and mm. Bowles played kids. And there's no, there's no doubt in that. And they played mm. us out the park, outmatched us, outbossed us. And that was a really, that was one of my lowest days in Richmond because mm. I, I thought Dan Buckley is like gods to me, you know. And mm. he was, but sometimes you, know, you just know when something has lost its edge and clearly at that point it lost its edge and it's gone too long. And, uh, you know, not all Liam's fault because you say the budget was kind of slashed a little bit as well. So it's a difficult... But it just it just come to an end, a natural end, unfortunately. There, I think. Yeah, look, and it was a sad day. You know, but you know, I'd say the big man in the dressing room, obviously, Jer was the assistant manager. But, yeah. Uh, Clarky, Bermo, Conan, you know, Killian Brennan. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, it was for Christy Fagan, who had a nasty injury that year. Who, you know, missed out then, and we obviously that was another there. killer. Exactly. You know. You, that would really hurt you, and mm. you know that would really, that would re- that losing a manager like a figure like that, you know, and mm. it, it would really rock rock the boat mm. a bit. But, you know, I think we had five or six games to go in the season. Jura mm. Brown obviously came in. Uh, Jura done really good work in terms of signing mm. these players up. Mm. Uh, the likes of Desmond on a two-year deal, you know, yeah. two-year deal who was big yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah. Remo and stuff. You know, I know he had a year left on his contract mm. at the time and all, but obviously you know, Forrest are back at the club as well at that. Well no, Forrest I came the following season season under Kenny, we had Forrester, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. you know, you, you go on to twenty nineteen and mm. it looked like a new start for Pats uh mm. in Harry and from what he done at Bray, I think everyone was really excited. I mm. think the season tickets were up. That fourth night of the season against Cork. They also uh, gone to Europe, by the way. Uh, again, in adversity. That was a great trip. Uh, but that was the first. Uh, that was the first uh, season in Europe for what? That was three, twenty six. Dynamo yeah. Minsk. Yeah, that's right. So um, you know that was still a big thing for the club. We, we were looking yeah. to get in there. That was Look, the club's They friendlies against Chelsea and that as well, didn't they? And Richard yeah, and the, uh, yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about that. No, but, but you know what I mean. You know, yeah. You know, you think back on that season, and it's like mm. the, the poor strings open for us. And mm. you know, we brought Forrester back on a three year deal, which was mm. massive, but obviously, he wasn't really, he wasn't that. Mm. Uh, he Did the football, do you think the type, type of football that Kenny kind of deployed might have helped either there a little bit? It was quite defensive, yeah, look, the, wasn't it? Was a bit to be of honest. Both, to be yeah, honest, definitely the both, yeah. Us a little bit. Mm. Uh, Few players mm. didn't want to be there, and you know, Harry had to deal with a lot of issues, which I felt. But I think that I think that's it as well. I think we'll obviously come on to the O'Donnell and uh, Berman under O'Donnell, but I just wonder if Berman has said was a little bit disillusioned at this point because there were one or two issues in that, as you say, at the club and stuff as well. And you just wonder, it's very difficult, isn't it, to be, I don't know, really up for it like you should if others aren't, let's say. Yeah, look, I, I said it. I said it before, and I was going to wait till the end to say it, but I'll say it now. It's mm. it's very hard to mm. manage a football, or sorry, to captain a football team when things aren't going playing side, and you know, in mm. fairness to Jared O'Brien and Connor Kenny, mm. you know, they never really had to captain the side through the shits, you know, and mm. you know, they they never really had to look Jared O'Brien towards the back end of his career. We mm. were. That way down, we were on the process of mm. going into that 2017 season. We knew it was coming. Mm. It was like a slow. It was like it was. It was like we were on the Titanic. You mm. know, we knew it was going to happen. Uh, mm. So, you know, it's very easy 
captain the side when things are playing silent, mm. when we're winning leagues, when we're winning cups, when we're mm. playing good football, and when, when mm. everything's rosy. But when the shit hits the fan like it did in 2017, it's yeah. very hard to, you know, manage that group as a captain. Mm. Like, I know people say, you know, the players run the dressing room. There's no question about it. Oh, yeah. Usually. And, you know, the captain, the captain runs the dressing room. And mm. we had some really good pros, you know, in terms of in there and Birmo dealt with it very well. Mm. But, you know, I just think you can only do so much. Players are going to, you know, players mm. are going to mess up, they're going to mess up. Players aren't going to care, you know, you can't. It only takes two or three as well. It doesn't take the whole dressing room. You can't you know? instill that into people, you know. No. You can't. That's you're you're either there or you're not. Mm. But you know, one by then obviously Harry left and you know we you yeah, he didn't even up. get to the he didn't even get the season, Harry Kenny, and obviously O'Donnell comes in and uh, seven games I think for seven games to go in the season and then you had the COVID going into the next season, all that kind of stuff as well. So his first season's half a season, but Bermo again signed a new contract. But it did seem like in the last couple of seasons, we'll tie in 20 with 21 in many ways, that Bermo did get a new lease of life. He's a different player now. You know what I mean? He hasn't got the pace he once had. He got bomb up and down the wing. But that experience of doing well and that experience of the, the downtimes as well has really lent into his experience as a player now. And uh, he's got other valuable attributes now, hasn't he? Um, yeah, as look, well in his game. We've heard, especially last season, mm-hmm. that you know, the last seven games, mm. you know, he, he obviously played because we didn't have another mm. left foot type of thing. Uh, mm. But, you know, you look at the the 20, the, like the 2020 season and, mm. you know, we're bringing in Shane Griffin who was on a top wage and, mm-hmm. you know, you're bringing in these players and it's only an 18-game season and mm. you know, you're kind of worrying that, you know, you're, 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 you're worrying that you know, Bremo might leave because he mightn't be in mm-hmm. Stevie's plan. Stevie's out there bringing in Griff. And mm. I, I obviously talk myself. And that, yeah, there is a bit of love and there is a bit of bias in it. But I always felt that Bremo and Pat should go hand in hand. But I always uh, felt as well that Bremo would relish the challenge of someone new coming in. I mean, he's seen it before in the past and that and under Lean Buckley with players like Jake Carroll in the past. I get the feeling he would have seeing Griffin coming in and thought, look, that might have helped up his game as well in many ways in his own head and said, look, I'm, and by the way, he's only 32 now, but it just feels like he's around a long time. But he must have felt to himself, look, um, you know, I can still extend my career. You know, anyone that can come in, I can uh, keep hold my own. I can adapt my game slightly, which he has. He's played often uh, as a centre-back in the back three as well, and he can do that job very well on the left-hand side. But I suppose the other thing is he became Pats as a... Uh, uh, highest league appearance holder that year as well, surpassing the great uh, Paulo Zam, who was on 308. And uh, Bermo, I think it was a like, match with Bohemians, he passed him out um, he had on to, 309. He had to wait. He had to wait. Uh, like, like, this is where I thought my Woody was coming. Bermo was dropped. Yeah. Bermo was dropped against Cork City just before the call. And Shane mm. Griffin played. Mm. And from there on, I worried. All through mm. the lockdown, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't the fact that the firm was probably going to be gone at the end of the year. Mm. And, mm. you know, and it, it was a bit of a worry for me now. Uh, I think, obviously, he had to wait to be that record. Until that would have been the game. And then we obviously went into lockdown that made it longer. He obviously he didn't play yeah. the first couple. Shane Griffin played in the first couple of the games back. Yeah. And that's when I thought firm was there is my number. Mm. Uh, you know, a game that I think back at, was Shamrock Rovers away? Uh, Shamrock Rovers, sorry, I'll, I'll actually, even before that, just in top mm. of my head, Shamrock Rovers at home towards the summer. Well, obviously, it was the summer, there's only 18 games of the season. So uh, it was it was the middle, it was at the middle round of mm. pictures in that season, just after the comeback. And Shane Griffin got sent off, and mm. Berman was obviously in left for the following week. Uh, mm. I really thought he, he, he upped his game. Uh, mm. People would call, would say that he was probably mediocre in the round that 2017, 18, 19, sorry, 18, 19 mm. season. He mm. looked, there was an awful lot of issues, so we won't go into it mm. behind, mm. but, but that with himself and with his family, that mm. some tragedies that he had to deal with. And obviously that's going to take its toll as well. Yeah. Uh, 
as much as he'd like to say and never touch the ball, yeah. ball moment, but you know it does, and you're it does hurt, and mm-hmm. I can understand that, and I think every fan would understand that too, you know. But then he got a new lease of life. Then when he got back into that team after that Griffin red card, mm-hmm. and you know he played Shamrock Rovers away on the telly towards the back mm-hmm. end of 2020 when they were holding up the title, and. Mm-hmm. He was superb in that game. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, fast forwarding this year again, you know, at the start mm-hmm. as well. He, he 2021. The, mm. 2021, yeah, of course. Yeah. He, was, he was getting back in the side. And mm. obviously. I think he got injured, didn't he, for a couple of months? He did a shoulder or something like that. Fairmo, though, he took his chance big time. Like, and by the time Griffin got back, he wasn't getting back into the team, basically. Like, that's it. And, you know, you think back even this year of the goal in Sligo and the way he ran to Stevie. And, well, I know for a fact he wasn't running to Stevie. I'm not just saying that because he's gone. He was actually running to the players and then he forgot he went in the dugout because of that <laughs> goal. <laughs> so uh, he was kind of, he was celebrating. He, was, he wanted to celebrate with the boys. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, uh, you know, that goal... And that celebration, that picture, I put the picture mm. up with them all running after Bermo and let them see it. Mm. And mm. honestly, that was that was a great one. And, you know, we felt like we got his mojo back type of thing. I'm not oh, saying definitely. that all yeah. yeah. you know How was he actually keen? Just got not going back to the start, but we compare Bermo at the start of Pat's career roughly to now. How is he different? What type of player is he now, in your opinion? Yeah, now, you know, he's Obviously, a lot more experience. He's a lot of miles on the tank. For uh, you know, he's a lot of miles on the clock. He does now at this time of his career, twenty-two mm-hmm. years of age. I still think there's another three, four years in him. Uh, if he wants to be, there is. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent mm-hmm. at reading the game. Uh, mm-hmm. Defense. You know, wingers never really get a sniff off. And look, if he's quicker than him, he's quicker than him. But he's mm-hmm. not going to be cleverer than Bremo. And that's I'd, I'd back Bremo in any one v one situation mm-hmm. uh, and you know obviously Lee Desmond played alongside him on the left and you know when he was beaten for pace we obviously had Lee there you know you've obviously you had James a bank with her who we probably mm-hmm. see next year whip where yeah. we're walking on that's going to be really good but yeah. you know I think we have that bit of pace to get us out of trouble type of thing mm-hmm. as well but he's just so rounded he's such a leader in the dressing room you know and I was listening to him. I found it funny. I was listening to uh, he done some podcast. I should know the name of it. Uh, he done a podcast with whoever. And anyway, I'm sorry if they, if they are listening. I apologise. Not, not the uh, kind of one, no. Oh, oh I've no, no idea. No. Anyway, uh, one, so yeah. He done it, and he was like, he was talking about the young lads in the group and all. And they were like Darren and all. And they're all asking, "Bermo, you come to Belfast?" And Bermo was like, "Yeah, yeah, I go." And then he only got home or something, and he realised. I'm playing twenty two. We look down yeah. there with me young flip. Like <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. So you know, fairness to him, uh, you know, yeah, he's yeah. really good. The dressing room, I think, mm. the way he spoke on that podcast. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name that's gone out of my head, but how he spoke on it and how well he was speaking yeah. to the young lads. He says we let them express themselves. We let them say what they want. Mm. So he, well, obviously, within reason. If mm. if a word had to be said, a word had to be said. Mm. All these young I think he means that. what he means for that probably is that um, their opinions are as valid as his opinion. Let's say that's it exactly. And yeah. you know, let them be themselves. And I love that. Mm. And mm. Bearman would have had that when he was there with Stewie Bourne and Stephen Bradley and you know, mm. Damian Lynch. You know, you you wouldn't you wouldn't get that say. So you know, in fairness to him, he done really well. Obviously, going on then, when lifting the cup as captain after being through that whole journey, it just felt like the ice and you know, right on the top mm-hmm. of the cake. And you know, it was to see Christy O'Neill, who was obviously done it day in, day yeah. out, all the way yeah. through. Yeah. You know, but well, he's such a Pat's man, his family. Like, I, I'm obviously very lucky enough and privileged to know his family mm-hmm. very well and to know them on a personal level. Mm. And obviously it's from Bally Fairness as well, if people don't know, which is obviously a stone throw from Ninja Corley. Like. That's it, you know, and it's it's great to see and he's a Pat man, he knows that. I mm. I think look, you know, and I, I genuinely think 
when the when Bermo's days are up, which I hope I'm not yeah. for another three four years, I, that he I will agree be with involved. You. He will be involved with Pats. He's you know he won't wear another club's crest on his chest. Obviously, he's managing a Lance Arsenio side, but that's different. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I don't think we'll see Bremo <laughs> with another League of Ireland club in his chest. I think he's a Pats man through and through. What he's doing, mm. lift the cup. Look, next year again, he's going to be he's going to be even more important next year because, mm. you know, to Tim, he's going to be an asset to Tim. Mm. If I'm going in as Pats manager, we don't want anyone else as captain other than Bremo. I think, mm. you know, he's going to give just- you- Obviously, he's signing a new contract for this season as well, which will be his 13th season. That's and it. he's adaptable as well, because uh, obviously Breslin has come in. That's another challenge for him. Um, sometimes Tim plays a back three. I don't know if he looked to do that at Pats, but Berman could easily fit in there as well. So there's a couple of roles that well, he fit in. Well, I've no doubt Bermo, Bermo will be playing next year. Uh, I think he, he, I'm not, he, he'll disagree with me, of course. Mm. You'll say you'll have to fight for his position, but I think he's deserved a start in the league for a first couple of games at least. Mm-hmm. And he deserves now. Obviously, Brez Brezo will get his chance, and he he will play in the, in games. But I I've a feeling Bermo has earned his right to be the mm-hmm. number three. Obviously, he's going to be the number three, but yeah, to earn his right to be the starting left full for mm-hmm. the season. Uh, obviously pre season and you know stuff like that will play a part. But injuries are enough. I yeah. don't want anyone else as my captain. A Pat next year, if I'm Tim Clancy as Bermo, because what he gives you in the club, what he gi- he knows the club, he knows the fans. Like, you know, he's absolutely adored by everyone on Pats. And, you know, he might say different. He might, you know, he might try and play it down a little bit. And because he's in that moment and he's in that mm. zone. But when he retires, he is going to be down at Richmond every week or every two weeks mm. or whatever it is. He's going to be down there at games. He's going to be watching. His family are still going to be involved. You know, his dad is at every game. You know, obviously he had, he had, he had a sad person of, 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 a, of a close family member who was at all the games as well. And, you know, so there's such a connection there and it's a personal connection to Pats. His family come down and they know the fans, they know the people, they know they're welcome. But that goes for every player, not just Bermo. And I think that's mm. what makes Pats really good because I don't want to know about you as much. I want to know about your family. Are they enjoying themselves? Are they enjoying living in Dublin? Are they enjoying mm. coming down to the games? And that's the way Pats are. But I think, you know, having a player like Bermo there to explain that on the playing side, and obviously we'll do the rest in the stands type of thing, but, you know, the standards he sets, everything he sets, I, I just, I honestly, I can't think of a better professional in the League of Ireland, you know, for so long. He obviously had, if you go back, I genuinely think Alan Hurley is probably going to be named the best fullback ever to play in the one of the best fullbacks ever to play in the league. But hmm. you know, Bermo has to be right behind them in terms of what, what he's doing. You can give Bermo left back and Hurley right back. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> you know, that's gone with me now. Alan Hurley off the top of my head will probably be one of the one of the best yeah, ever absolutely. in the league. Absolutely, uh, Brian yeah. Shelley didn't play it enough for me. He probably would have been. Uh, but mm. you know, you look at Bremo and he has to be, yeah. he has to be absolutely for longevity, etc. etc. And um, you know, for he's been in the past team for 13 years, pretty much, we'll say 12 years anyway, 12 seasons, pretty much, and hasn't really lost his place. So, obviously, little dips, every player is going to have a dip uh, in a career like that. But I mean, like some of the individual accolades will finish off here, like uh, PFAI team of the year in 12, 13, 14. So that proves my point about being the best lap, left back in the league in that time. You know, he's obviously got past player of the season a couple of times as well. Um, you know, St. Pat, Patrick's leg total appearances record. And that's going to go up and up and up now. And uh, oh, I tell you, it's going to be a long time. That's ever beaten. At the top of my head, I would say Lee has about 200 and... 80 games, 275, 280 games. I would say off the top of my head. 188, but that's league games. So that doesn't count cup games. So you would yeah. say Cup Europe and Cup and things like that. He's in the 200s for sure. Like, you know, so 26 years of age. Um, so Lee, if you're watching there, uh, please try and beat uh, Ian Birmingham's record by the 10 year <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, honestly. Oh, brilliant. Captain, what a captain! And you know, it's 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 great that we have a captain that we can relate to in the club. And look, we've uh, he's obviously learned from Conor Kenny, 
you know, Stewie Bourne, who was captain, mm. Damien Lynch, who was captain. Mm. I think even Derek Pender had the armband but when he when uh, these lads went in before Burma and you know, mm. it's you know, we obviously learned off Jared O'Brien then as well. And you know, he's learning off the likes of Killian Brennan, Conan Bourne, he's picking things up off these players. Mm. Even managers yeah. like Liam and uh, I know Stevie's That's gone, it. but I'm sure he picked one or two things up off the positive yeah. things anyway. You know, Stevie has been one of the best captains probably the league absolutely oh and you know them them you know i think it's it's it, you see it in the team but to have a player like Bremo for so long at the club is just fantastic it's great mm. to see him lift the cup as as a captain you know yeah. like he obviously picked up a runners up medal he picked up a winners medal he picked up a league winners medal league cups and, and that yeah and the league cups but to see him actually going up and holding that cup up for the first time mm. to be I think it's what well, we've only, we I think I think he's the is he the third I think he's only the I think he's the fourth captain only. Uh, mm, he would be yeah yeah the, yeah is, that's true you know, yeah it's amazing like yeah that's just incredible. Look guys, we'll leave it there. That was brilliant, Keno. Fair play to you. Uh, guys, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, even Birmingham, can kind they of go on for 20 seasons? We'll see. But uh, subscribe, hit your bell notification button, and thanks for watching. <laughs>